Okay, so let me talk a little bit about the implementation of the scriptable objects hierarchy. So first let's check the containers script and um, you can see that the container script just has a public SOHI tree and I'm using the hexile.sohi namespace where this class is defined. But the container has nothing special and uh, any script that has a public SOHI tree will get the full functionality of the tree right in the editor. Uh, so let's see what, what a tree is inside this namespace. So I have it here and it's using that namespace and as you can see it's uh, inheriting from a node class but uh, apart from that it simply has a root node and um, uh, yeah it's private but I have uh, created the getters and setters for it so you have a property that allows you to read what the root node is okay so what what is a node let's see what is a node and a node it's a scriptable object and it's a scriptable object that has this list of children which I chose to hide in the inspector but you can also show it and um, it has just methods to add childs or insert a child at certain point so where is the functionality of the SOHI tree that is actually defined in a, in a, um, an editor script called the Sohi tree drawer and the Sohi tree drawer is a property drawer for the Sohi trees okay so all the the important functionality of the library is actually defined in this drawer so I will go through the code although I've taken some time to uh, comment everything that I thought it was important so that you can modify it and create your own functionality um, so the first thing is that uh, we will have to uh, determine how high the, the um, container of our inspector will be that this height has to be calculated dynamically because it depends on how many children this node has and how many children the next node has and etc so we have to do this calculation uh, dynamically and we'll we'll store a float called drawer height with uh, that calculation then we we're gonna refer to the serialized tree and we're if if we delete a node in the tree we first store it in this private variable called uh, node to delete then we we override this method called get property height and this is where we're gonna fix the height of the of the property drawer and we're only adding to the base a method we're adding this float that we had previously defined uh, we have a method called set drawer height which simply adds the parameter we pass to the current drawer height okay those are helper methods now comes the on GUI part and we're overriding the on GUI for our uh, SOHI trees and this is what's gonna happen first we're gonna set the drawer height to zero and we're gonna say that the position height is 16 if you don't do this then your boxes will stretch as the size of the drawer stretches so you need to set this number to something uh, fixed um, then we're gonna uh, create a variable called state which is of type tree GUI info and we're by using this method called get state object we're telling the inspector that there is a class where we're gonna store information about 
the object we're inspecting inside this variable. So we'll need to check what this class is, but for now uh, we'll store a, a, an instance of this class in this variable called state. Um, okay, then uh, we're gonna create a serialized object of the tree using uh, uh, create editor and then serial uh, taking the serialized object of the editor and um, here we're uh, checking if our tree has a root and if it doesn't have a root it will create um, it will create it and also I'd like to mention that all undo operations are working so every operation you do to the trees you can just hit command and Z and it will go to the previous state and also redo uh, and that's what this line does for creating the root of the tree and here we're uh, adding this new scriptable object which is a node that we created we're adding it to the tree that we already stored in the asset database because the trees we're gonna create them by going to the context menu create as uh, as such like right click and then create sohi and tree so we we're sure that they're part of the asset database and we're just adding this new scriptable object to that object which was already created okay uh, then we're gonna um, uh, have a button to save the tree and it simply saves the the all the assets which means not only this tree but all trees that you've created and uh, we, we refresh the asset database okay so far so good now here's where the magic happens remember that variable state where I said we, we're, we would store information about our tree uh, it also has methods and we're calling this method called set indented nodes. What this does is that it goes through the tree, it transverses the tree going from parents to children and it creates a dictionary where each node is coupled with the um, indentation level it should have, it should have in, our, in our list. So if I add a node, now this node is indented once, and if I add a node on top of that, now this one is indented twice. So we're, we're creating a dictionary which tells us each node how much should it be indented, and um, we'll see that method in a second, but once we have that, we, we can check the amount the the number of nodes in that dictionary and that dictionary is stored inside the state and it's called indented nodes so we're taking the count of that and we're adding two just to add some space and then we're multiplying by 20 uh, to give it a, an appropriate scale and finally for each um, pair of node and indentation that it's inside the dictionary we're gonna call this row um, method and this row method will be the one where we define how we want each row to look um, now finally if our, our to the lead node is not uh, null then we're gonna find that node and we're gonna delete it and this has to be done after this for each loop is finished because we don't want to be editing and deleting something that we're not sure we're gonna need to draw later on so we first draw everything and then we do the operation to delete and at the last stage we repaint okay let's talk then about the row method and that row, row method has two parts the draw part and the events part 
okay so in the draw part you can see that well before anything happens I'm setting I'm storing the color it has and I'm checking which is the current event happening in the UI and then uh, I I say that this row should be its indentation level should be this dictionary and this dictionary which was a parameter is actually the, the state indented nodes that we stored in the tree GUI info class okay it's becoming a, a bit complex but please uh, stick with me for a little bit more uh, so what we're doing is saying okay each row should the, the indentation level should be uh, dri driven by the previous calculation we made and we stored in this class and we passed as a parameter and we're drawing a, a, we're creating a, a rect which is using this position and here is how uh, the, the width of our rect and we're uh, simply drawing a, a box and we're changing a little bit the color just a little bit on the on the alpha scale if our mouse is there so you can see that when I go through it it becomes a little bit uh, less bright so that it reacts to the position of the mouse and then I'm just uh, choosing to put a label field with the node name and um, we implement a, a button to delete the nodes and this button the, the only thing it, it does is that it it tells our to delete node that is this node so when when the uh, for each loop ends it will check if there was something to delete and it will delete it okay that's basically what we paint and um, then we have events and these events are uh, set up so that you can drag and drop things. I will not go into the detail of the of how the events are, are set up. It's pretty well commented and you can check it out. The only thing that I would uh, uh, you uh, like to point out is that you use a custom class which is a custom drag data and you can get it and set it when you start a drag or finish a drag and that class is simply uh, two nodes who was the origin, the, the node you're moving and who is the parent and this uh, class will be filled when you move something from the inspector like here I, I set it up uh, drag custom drag data but it will be null if I drag it from here. So the events uh, actually check if the custom drag data is, uh, is null or not. So that way you know from where you're choosing your, your nodes. Okay, finally, uh, let me see the tree GUI info. And here's the, the dictionary indented nodes that we're gonna build. Uh, you can also create a list of all the nodes and create a list with some child nodes and it has recursive methods to go through the entire tree and fill these indented nodes with with trees you can see that this method set nodes recursive uh, it's called again for each children here and every time it goes through it it adds a node to this dictionary with an int index. Uh, okay, so um, please check the code and I hope you find this useful. It's completely free. I would love it if you, if someone out there wants to contribute. And uh, also you can check the asset I made for behavior trees using these ideas. That's not free, but it's a, a useful asset. Okay, thank you very much and I hope to see you soon. Bye.